Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome back to my channel, Crooked Imaging. Hope you're all well. Right, I have a video today. Um, I've had so many customers uh, asking me about the new DJI Fly app. Um, so DJI updated that uh, probably three or four days ago now. So I'm a little bit behind the behind the uh, behind the curve on getting this video out, but. Uh, um, I've had a few customers that have asked me because there's so many changes that DJI have made to this app that uh, things are in different places. Um, exposure lock, I think, is one that I've heard a lot of people talking about. That uh, the, the exposure lock seems to have disappeared in auto mode. Um, and also manual mode has now disappeared, but there's a new mode called Pro. So I'm just going to quickly run you through uh, the new app 1.4. Um, and just take you through the photography settings, the uh, you know, and camera settings, etc., on how to set everything up um, so that uh, you're not or to help with the confusion. Um, so what I'll do is I have got uh, this set up on an iPad, um, but it looks exactly the same on a on a mobile phone, and we'll just take you through what all the different buttons and functions do now and where exposure lock is now moved to etc etc uh, and i think actually the changes are quite good uh, i think they make things a little bit simpler but because dji didn't actually tell anybody where these things were moving to um it's caused quite a lot of confusion so without further ado let's go over to the app and let me take you through right so, on the app, we now have the uh, auto and manual. So, when you used to press on auto and manual, little camera down the bottom right hand side, uh, it used to go to manual, but now it changes to pro. Basically, that is the same as manual, and I'll come back to that in a minute. So, in auto, so we'll go back to auto, uh, what we have is we can move where the camera is taking the exposure information from. So if you just tap on anywhere on the screen, so there I've tapped on something dark and you saw the screen brighten up a bit, and if I tap on something light, you'll see the screen darkens down a bit. So basically you can tap around the screen when you're flying um, and you can select where the camera is metering for, you know in your exposure when you're taking pictures so that's quite handy now what you can also do is for exposure compensation so say it's not quite bright enough or it's not quite dark enough if you hold your finger on the uh, on the Sun and then slide down or slide up that is giving you your exposure compensation uh, so that's quite handy. Now, where's the exposure lock gone? Because the exposure lock used to be down bottom hand, bottom right hand side next to uh, next to the picture of the camera. Now you simply tap and hold on the place that you want to expose for, and for the exposure to lock. So if I just tap here and then hold it for a couple of seconds. You'll see that it's locked and you'll see a little notification that comes up and says it auto exposure locked. And to switch it off, you just do the same again. So you just hold your finger on that button. And there you have it. It's now taken that off. Now, if you want to want the camera to auto decide where the exposure is taken from, you can see on that yellow circle, there's a little tab kind of bit that, that protrudes out from the left. If you click on the cross, that will then get rid of that and clear it. So now the camera is using the overall scene to expose for rather than using uh, effectively spot metering. And again, if you want to just switch that back on again, just tap on the area that you want to spot meter. And as you can see, I'm just tapping. Now, if I wanted to expose your lock on that dark area and actually what you can do is, is just hold the button. There we go, we've exposed your locked. 
Now if I move it around, the exposure is not changing. You've got that spot metering technique that you can use. Uh, one other thing, uh, I, I can't remember if it was on the previous version. Uh, I only kind of discovered it because I was doing this spot metering, etc, etc. Is now you can move the camera up and down. Um, the position of the, the, the camera gimbal. Um, just by touching on the screen and sliding your finger up and down. So you just... So now you can do that, which I don't believe you could do before. And you can also, so if we do it again, you can see you can actually speed up and slow down the amount of movement as well, which is quite nice. Obviously, you can do that with the uh, the wheel on the back of the controller, but being able to do that on the screen as well is, uh, is quite a nice feature. Uh, and as I say, I can't remember if it did it on the old version of this uh, of this app or not. But uh, but it certainly does it on uh, on this version. Um, right. So if we go into manual, um, we don't have an awful lot of functionality in in manual because with the uh, Mini Two, you, you can't adjust aperture. You can only adjust ISO um, and the shutter speed. Um, so, but what we can do, if you want to change the uh, the ISO. Uh, the sensitivity of the camera if you click on ISO as I click on press on you can then adjust that just simply by sliding the slider up and down now obviously with photography and videography you want that to be as low as possible because that gives you the least amount of noise in your in your photos stroke videos um, so but that's how you adjust it in Pro. In, in Auto, it will automatically adjust the ISO to get the best settings out of your out of your camera. Um, but if if you're in a low light situation, then it will start to push the ISO limit up. Um, what we can also do is adjust the shutter speed. So we can just tap on the uh, the shutter there and then you can then adjust the shutter speed up and down and that's quite a nice feature as well and then you have white balance so if you click on white balance I have to set it again and I tap on white balance um, you can switch between auto and manual and that's that's quite nice as well. So you can adjust the uh, the your temperature at which the camera thinks you are filming stroke taking pictures at. So that's very handy. You can click on uh, for the the file format. So you can have here uh, JPEG and RAW, or you can just select JPEG. Uh, storage if you tap on storage it switches between how much memory you've got on your memory card and how many pictures you can take if you're in photo mode um, now if you change so if we press on where it says AEB um, if we select video you will then see that the buttons at the bottom have changed. So in auto now, we have storage. And again, that's now switches between memory space left and the amount of recording time that you have. So that's quite nice. Uh, you then have res and FPS. So if we tap on that, that allows you to select what resolution you're filming in, so 4K, 2.7, or 1080p. Um, and then obviously you can change your frame rates as well. Um, but I normally have mine set to 4K 25. Um, so that's what we have there. And then you can press on EV, ex exposure compensation, and then you can, again, vary that up and down. 
Right, so uh, when you're in video mode, um, the spot you don't ha actually get spot metering. Um, not 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 as you do in the in the uh, photo mode. Um, but you'll see when I tap on the screen, you get the little orange box appear in the middle. And we do the same thing again with that. So if you tap and hold, you get your exposure lock function. And then when you tap on the screen again, you'll see that it's got a little lock symbol. There we go. And if you want to turn that off again, press and hold. And then it's disappeared. So you don't get spot metering like you do in photo mode. Um, now, if you go into pro mode in video, uh, it is very similar to as it was in the, in the photo mode. So you can tap on uh, tap on your white balance, and you can switch between auto and manual, and you can adjust your ISO. And you can adjust your shutter. So probably when you're recording video, you're going to want your shutter speed to be twice your frame rate. So if you're recording 4K 25, for example, then you're going to want your shutter speed around 50. Um, and then what you're going to have to do is you're then going to have to control the the, uh, the exposure using using the ISO to get your correct exposure. Um, and then maybe an ND filter if it's too bright, if you're out on a bright sunny day and you can't get your shutter speed down low enough uh, and obviously you can't adjust the aperture so your only option will be to use uh, ND filters which we will be doing a review on. Uh, I've just had a delivery of the uh, the PGY Tech Mavic Mini and Mini 2 ND filters so conveniently you can see those on the, uh, the picture that the uh, drone is looking at at the moment just there um so i will be doing a review on those but uh, but that that's kind of what you need to use to uh, to get your correct exposure and match your uh, shutter speed to your frame rate with quick shots and pano i can't show you those at the moment but everything is just, uh, pretty much the same as what i've just showed you with the uh, the photo and video modes uh, one thing that can be useful, just quickly going through the camera, is uh, grid lines. Again, I don't think any of this has actually changed, um, but just sort of going through the, uh, the the camera settings. So histogram can be useful to have a look at how well your exposure is over the whole scene. That can just give you a quick idea, not just looking at the picture on the screen, because if you've got a bright iPad or phone or whatever or you, if you're using something that's bright then it doesn't give you necessarily a true representation of how the image actually looks um, whereas with the histogram looking at that I can see that the uh, the, the, the image is underexposed um, so just by adjusting your aperture you can see how well your image is exposed and you kind of want your graph to sort of fill the whole histogram if possible that gives you you can see then that you've got the, the the most amount of tones and colors and everything that you can that you can achieve with that camera uh, so that's a very useful uh, useful feature to have um, then overexposure warning can be good again as I say if you've got a really bright screen, it might look like something's overexposed when it isn't. Uh, so let's just demonstrate that. So if I turn the brightness right, if I go too high on my exposure, now you can see on the screen sort of like a like hashes, and basically that's showing you all the areas where the image is overexposed and you've lost highlight detail. So. That's a useful thing to have switched on. Uh, you can also switch on grid lines, which is quite nice. So you've got like a crosshair, so that shows you where the center of the picture is. 
you've got one there that shows you where the thirds are so let's just show those let's just turn the brightness down a little bit just help you see those a bit better there you go so now you can see those grid lines um, that's quite a nice feature to have uh, it just helps you one to set up the calibration of your grim gimbal if it's slightly off and uh, and two when you're framing up a picture it allows you to it just shows you where the thirds are and stuff like that so that's very useful too uh, and you also have the center dot if you want that switched on as well I'll get rid of the histogram so you've got like a like a crosshair as well and again as I say when you when you're flying and you're moving the gimbal up and down etc etc that can just be just handy to have just for quick framing up of your pictures uh, or video etc so uh, so there you have it that's just a very quick overview of the new app and hopefully sort of answered some of the questions about where uh, some of the tools have gone as I say like I, uh, like the exposure lock etc etc right hope you uh, you enjoyed you've enjoyed this video I uh, hope it's been informative and useful that's what I'm uh, trying to do with these videos um, if you have enjoyed the video please hit that thumbs up button uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell uh, so then you're notified when we bring a new video out uh, right so thanks for watching see you again soon bye for now